do. All right, so uh, now we're going to move on to something fun. So very soon you will be able to get a taste of Japanese culture right here in Philadelphia. And that's because the Shofuso Japanese House and Garden is about to open its doors to the public once again. And that's where we find our Kyrie Stewart this morning as he joins us now live. Hey, Kyrie. Hey guys, so before we start, before we start, Kelsey, Demetria, and Monica, you can chime in too. I have to ask, is it too late for a scarf? Because <laughs> I know everybody's been picking on me for it all morning. I think it looks fashionable. I think it looks fashionable. Is it too early it or too late? It's every winter. <laughs> no, Kelsey, did you check your text messages? <laughs> what was that? Uh, did you check your text messages? Because I just sent you a text during the commercial break asking why you have a scarf on when it's 90 degrees. It's 90. <laughs> it's hot. I'm like debating now, but it feels great out here. That's the thing. It feels great. You know, Shofuzo, um, I tell people that it's it, it, it's a hidden treasure pretty much because um, some people may not know it exists. It's right here in Fairmont Park. It's not far from our station. Just take a look at how beautiful it looks out here right now. There's so much to do here, and they open up tomorrow. Now, I want to take you all this way because this is such a gorgeous area. Um, I'm going to meet Kim Andrews. She is with the Japanese uh, Association here in Philadelphia. And, um, you know, they help run this house and, um, you know, they keep it looking nice and beautiful. And I know that you all have some changes and procedures um, this year as well, right? Because yep. of COVID. We are fortunate enough to be open. Uh, everybody who comes has to wear a mask. So our visitors wear masks and our staff wear masks. And we uh, we space out. We're asking for people to uh, to space out six feet, which we should probably step away from each exactly. other. Exactly. <laughs> I have the mask on too, so. And uh, we, uh, well, the house right now is not open to enter, but the garden is open. Um, and so once the, we hit the green phase, the house will be open for visitation again. But in the meantime, we have all these beautiful features here and, and for such a difficult period of time that we've had here in Philadelphia and across the country and around the world, this is really a, a, just a, such a wonderful place for people to come and recharge and get get their energy back and, and find a moment of peace outside. We've all been trapped in our houses. Maybe we, if you have a yard, you're lucky. And so at this right here, this is our. We're so fortunate to be open to welcome people back to get a piece of serenity here in Philadelphia. And it's so peaceful. I tell people this is one of my favorite places to come to in the city. So let's real quickly talk about a portion of this because uh, we walked around the main house, but we're in front of the tea house right now. Let's just head down here because I want to show people just a little bit more of the exterior. Tell us real quickly about this tea house. Uh, well, the, the tea house is a, the small area to your left. It's a little room where traditionally tea would be done, uh, which is Japanese tea ceremony is a highly choreographed, um, beautiful ceremony of hospitality. It's almost a performance art. Mm -hmm. um, and so a tea garden, which is the area that we just came from, is enclosed by a fence and it's dewy and, and so soft and everything's green and beautiful um, and so it's kind of a way to let the outside world stay behind while you come to the tea garden first and then into the tea house to, to experience something where the outside world doesn't interfere. Right here you can see this is our courtyard garden so beautiful. we actually have three different types of gardens here. We have the tea garden, the courtyard garden and then the main hill and pond garden which you'll see later mm -hmm. and so this courtyard garden it's an urban style garden and it represents in Japan gardens have re elements that represent represent the, the topography and geography of Japan. So there's a river and coves and, and banks and little mountains. Um, so it's kind of a miniaturized abstract version of what you know a Japanese uh, landscape would look like. So here we have a beautiful basin mm -hmm. that came from the Museum of Modern Art when Shifuso came here. What's that used for? That is for washing hands. Oh wow. So okay. it's, it's everything has a practical purpose. So the, the basin is for washing hands and uh, then the, the this area is just a quiet contemplative place. Awesome. So much here. Very tranquil. Kim, thank you so much. Demetria and Kelsey, I'm going to send it back to you guys. Coming up later in the show, we're going to talk about some new things that people can experience when they come here, and we're just going to show you more around Shifuzo. So beautiful out here, guys. I'm telling you, you have to check it out. It does look gorgeous. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Kyrie. Thank you. Coming up,